do you guys see this album as a one-off album or do you see the band as this is a band where we have future albums in mind, future music in mind. We want to keep building this band, this entity, this brand, uh, or is it, we just, we had this collection of 11 songs and here we are. No, I think, um, I think we had way too much fun doing this and um, everybody's kind of, you know, excited about seeing what, is possible for this in the future. I like, you know, um, calling it a band. I don't know if it's a band, it's a project. Um, but like I said, it's a project that acts like a band. And I believe I've seen in interviews, I haven't actually discussed this with him, but uh, Alex said he's got a folder on his desktop that says NV2 on it. And I know that Andy sent him some things and I, I know the songs that he sent them. And we've had discussions about continuing on because we just had so much damn fun doing this and i mean really that's what it comes down to right like if you don't if you're doing music and you're not having fun doing it why are you doing it you know because it's so difficult (laughs) it's so taxing and it's so all-consuming it's like if you're not having the best time in the world doing it then why bother um so we had a great time making this so i can definitely see us moving forward and having the second that's breaking news. NV2. So may, maybe we'll do the, uh, the, the Led Zeppelin albums one through four. We'll have, we'll have NV2 <laughs> right. and we'll, we'll go from there. Billy yeah. Talent made it to Billy Talent three and then decided we can't do four because then it's exactly Led Zeppelin. So they made oh, it three albums deep. Maybe you'll do to two and then switch the names. Out of all bands that you can copy, though, that's a pretty good one. That's true. You should copy from the best. Uh, So as we wrap up, are you good if we do a few rapid fire questions? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. All right. So you, you, when we talked before the interview, you mentioned that there's no plans for like a big tour in support of the album, but uh, maybe there's consideration for a launch show or uh, some local shows. Uh, what what are your thoughts on on if anyone could could see the band live? And there's man, there's got to be some demand for that now that the album's out. Well, we we've briefly talked um, about how we kind of see this working and playing out, and uh, it's probably another Zoom call coming. To be honest with you, um, exactly what where this goes from here, but. Um, Cause that tends to be how we do things. We do things through like zoom calls and zoom chats and whatnot. But um, I've seen in the other interviews, Alex saying that, you know, he sees possible one-off shows here and there and, and things like that. And I think if, if, if it was going to happen, that would be the way that it would probably exist. And we're open to it. Uh, we're definitely open to it. So does that mean we're going to do it? I don't know what it means, but it means that we're open to it. And, I think if we do it though, we want to do it properly. So we want to have, we don't want to just get up and do it for the sake of doing it. We want to do it and we want to make it as impactful as what we feel the music needs to be. So it would have to have the right lighting and it would have to have the right sound and it would have to have the right parts being performed. And it would probably take a hell of a lot more musicians than the four of us to pull it off. And uh, I, I, I saw massive attack. Hmm quite a while ago now um when heligoland came up came out and there was i think nine people on the stage but it it was an unbelievable experience and the lighting was just amazing and it was incredible and you know i've always in in my mind's eye kind of thought if if we did something it would probably be like that um so it'd be pretty grandiose but it would be in a smaller a smaller place where we could control what was going on but i have no idea i was gonna i was gonna ask you on my head i was going to ask you what's the best concert you've ever seen and maybe maybe that's the answer the one you just gave and i was going to say that the best concert i have ever seen is nine inch nails and that would be great inspiration uh yeah. for you guys for the type of of lights and video and image and sound well i saw nine inch nails at molson park during the downward spiral tour and it was one of the most violent things i've ever seen in my life easily one of the best shows i've ever seen it was crazy um guitar player got knocked out like out cold at the end of like it hit in the head with a guitar or something. And he was down and the roadies dragged him off the stage. It was nuts. There's just a corpse that got dragged. It was incredible. It was wow. amazing. Um, and I remember cause sound garden was coming on after them. And I thought, I don't know how the hell you can't follow that. Nobody can follow that. Like, what was that? I don't even know what that was. Uh, yeah. Massive attack was up there. Tom Waits. Wow. 
Tom Waits, man. Oh my God. I saw him on the meal variations tour. I was, I laughed. I cried. I became a better person. It was crazy. Is that a, a haunting show as well? Like I think of the records I know, like, is it rain dogs? I think that's the album that I know. Yeah. Rain dogs. Oh, meal variations is just an absolute work of art. I'll have to uh, check that one out. It's just, Oh my God, this is crazy, but what a great show. But I saw Peter Gabriel as well. Uh, I saw him on the up tour. And again, that was another one of those moments where it was just, but that was like the spectacle of it, you know, and the songs and, and, and all that sort of stuff. So, so yeah. true, true or false. If NVM of none does just one show period, is it a Toronto show? Oh God. I don't know. Uh, maybe. Well, th- three quarters of the band is more, yeah toronto based right i'm just i'm going with i'm crunching numbers here you know yeah one of us is in toronto one of us is in uh, burlington and i'm in hamilton so yeah uh yeah it would make it it would make sense but i don't know i okay. know I'm, I'm trying to will this into fruition you know i'm trying to you know Ottawa, i don't know oh snap that would be better but I'm, I'm being realistic if bands only have one canadian date it's toronto so i'm not getting greedy you know i'm just yeah, I'm planting yeah, yeah. the seed of where i could still physically make it four hours away no problem you know because <laughs> there's montreal's only an hour and a half as well that's a good one. Oh, good point yeah love going to montreal love montreal all right. Well, all to all the the listeners, all the all the fans of Envy of None, I've planted the seeds for you for for Canadian dates. So you're you're welcome for that. Uh, what would you say are your all time favorite albums? Are there any that you just go back to over and over again? Oh, these are the music lover questions. Yeah. Um, oh boy. Geez, that's a, that's a, that's so difficult for it's me. It's one of those f- favorite children. Yeah, talk talk, color of spring. Talk is talk, it, color of spring. Uh, that album is definitely a desert island uh, record for me. That is just such a wonderful experience from beginning to end. In terms of for me, at least, anyway. Uh, a lot of people will pick the record after that, which was called "The Spirit of Eden." But for me, the color of spring was just the production on it and the songwriting on it and everything about it. Um, there's another band called the blue Nile and their first two records hats and the blue Nile to me are just incredible songwriting uh, again from a similar period too. So maybe that seems to be kind of a theme going on here. Uh, the Tom Waits record meal variations for me was just, you know, crazy. John Hyatt, bring the family. John Hyatt. Probably, my dad, my dad will be impressed. I saw him in Chicago and my God, what a, what a songwriter. It's just what a great songwriter. Um, and they, you know, Pink Floyd, which ones? Oh, so wish you were here is, is my number one favorite album of all time. Yeah. wish you were here, but I mean, yeah, there's the wall, hard. there's dark side of the moon. It's pretty hard to beat that. Uh, I remember being a teenager and I smoked a joint and heard Dark Side of the Moon and I think it changed my life. It took you to another universe. Yeah. I was never really the biggest fan of The Wall, but that record, I was like, whew, that's crazy. But a, a lot of Gary Newman, uh, the Pleasure Principle album. <sighs> crazy. Aerosmith. Um uh, yeah, I don't know, man. There's too many. So Aerosmith back when they were like considered hard rock. I, I know Andy said that he thinks you know we've had conversations and he's he's all about rocks. He he loves rocks. I'm more of a toys in the attic kind of guy, but but regardless, it's the same era, same period. Yeah, I I went and uh, so Rolling Stone has their list of the 500 greatest albums of all time. I went and listened to all of those. Like it literally took like a year and there's a bunch of Aerosmith albums and their earlier albums. And I was surprised, you know, a, a lot of the Aerosmith stuff that we know that's more current is the, yeah. the, the poppier, the, I don't want to miss a thing, the ballads, all that stuff. And I'm listening to these albums and it's like, they're like rock rock. Yeah. Like they're, they're balls to the walls, given her rock, you know? Yeah. My jaw was on the floor. The first time I heard uh, toys in the attic, I was just like, what am I listening to? Actually, this is funny because um, 
I think I got Toys in the Attic and Rush 2112 at the same time. So 2112 was like a very, very different experience than Toys in the Attic. Toys in the Attic is kind of down and dirty and just rock and roll. And 2112 was this experience. Yeah, and, to and smoke I, another joint for 2112. Yeah, I think. Well, I was a little young at that point. But um, but I will tell you, and, and I'm not saying this just because of, but I really did wear out moving pictures and, and permanent waves, those, those two records. In the live records that came subsequently afterwards, I was just enamored. Absolutely never. Yeah. When I finally saw Rush live, it, it's man, how how three guys can sound like 12 guys on stage is is insane. But yeah, it's next level. It's absolutely next level. Yeah. So I, I got just a few more rapid fire questions. If you could sit down and have a conversation with anybody, living or dead, who would it be? Tom Waits. Wow, that was fast. That's the fastest answer. Normally people have to think, but you've you've thought about this before. No, Tom Waits. For Just because sure. he's he's he'd be so interesting, right? Yeah. And I just, you know, to sit down with with him and have a conversation, you know, regarding his outlook on anything. <laughs> I think would be fascinating. He's a unique individual. If so when you look back on your life and your career, what are you most proud of and, and what are you most grateful for? It's pretty hard to top what's going on right now, to be honest with you. Um, I, it would be this. I, I would, the other thing too, though, and, and because I do have this academic background and I do have uh, people that I've taught, uh, if there's any kind of influence that I've had on them, that's, that's, that's pretty gratifying as well. Any kind of positive influence, at least anyway. So, you know, what's going on right now is pretty cool, pretty damn cool, hard to, hard to beat. And, you know, being able to interact with some of the people that I've been able to interact with all the way through my career, regardless whether it's either teaching or working in music or working in studios, it's, it's been a hell of a good ride. So it's hard to pick one thing, but um, I, I would say that, you know, just the people that I've met along the way. Who, who, who would have thought that uh, in 2022, after with a two year pandemic, you know, one of the greatest things in your life has come to fruition. That's pretty great, right? right? Yeah, it's just crazy. W- what a crazy world this is. Do you, do you have any musical dreams that, have you, that you have yet to accomplish? Is there anything that you've just always wanted to accomplish that's still, still out there in the ether? Yeah, I still want to make records. I still want to work and produce on on records, and I still want to make records, and um, and not necessarily, you know, uh, besides Envy, and I, I want to work with other artists. I want to work with talented people. Um, I mean, that's the the most the most fun that I have, you know. And so that would be the thing that I need to accomplish moving forward, you know. So we have two two final deep deep questions and then we wrap up so alf in your humble opinion what do you think the meaning of life is why why are we here what is this this what is this thing that we're doing i think we're here to sort of um leave something better than behind us than what we came in with i think that's the meaning of life for me at least anyway and if you could go back in time and you could sit down with your 10 year old self and you could whisper advice. So you've, you, you, you said you're 55, you have 45 years of experience of mentorship of dreams, accomplished dreams, uh, dashed. You've had, uh, you know, you've had good things and bad things. What do you tell 10 year old, cute little 10 year old Alf with, a big, a big Afro, uh, just sitting there. What do you, what do you tell him, uh, um, to help him get through these, uh, this life that's not easy. Yeah. Do something other than music. Um, no. Um, how dare you, sir? I know uh, actually it's gonna, a friend of mine said to me, the hit songwriter, Terry Sawchuk. He said, yeah, if I ever have a child, I'm going to like nail the piano shut so they can't open it he's like that's it just don't do music but um no i i think i would probably tell him to just kind of trust trust your gut trust what you think is right do what you think is right and treat people with respect that would be what i would say 